Hello, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about a special case of continuous random variables here, the exponential distribution. All right, so we're, we've talked about general discrete random variables, kind of how we treat those, all the subtleties there. All right, but, but really we don't work with just general continuous random variables very often. Um, because, you know, with some unknown just general situation, the, the density curve could be ugly, could be unknown. All right, so, so usually when we're working with continuous random variables, we are working with special cases, such as the uniform, which we've already seen. Um, we, in this video, are going to look at the exponential. All right, so what's the exponential distribution all about? Well, remember back to discrete random variables, right? Remember what the Poisson distribution looked at, okay? So with the Poisson distribution, we were saying, all right, we've got a fixed interval here. And one of the examples we looked at, it was like flaws per millimeter of wire, right? So assume we were fixing this interval to one millimeter, okay? And you had some sort of um, parameter there, lambda, right, which told us how many flaws we expect per millimeter. Like say we're expecting, I don't know, two flaws per millimeter of wire, right? So lambda is two per millimeter and a Poisson random variable kept count, right? I expect two, but you could get three, you could get four, you could get however many, all right? So the Poisson, we have a fixed interval. We know how many events we expect to occur on that fixed interval. A Poisson random variable counts how many events actually occur. All right, the exponential is based on a similar idea. Often it's, it's phrased as it's based on a Poisson process. All right, but it's almost the opposite or the inverse of a Poisson distribution. All right, whereas the Poisson was a fixed interval and it counted how many um, events happen on that interval, well, the exponential says, okay, here is an event that has happened. What does this interval look like up until that event. All right, so, so that interval then is gonna be a measurement, right? It might be a certain amount of time. In this example, it might be a certain length, millimeters, all right, millimeters between flaws, okay? So again, the Poisson distribution, we have a fixed interval. We know how many events we expect to occur on that interval. The exponential looks at, well, how does this interval vary until the first event occurrence. All right, but it is based on a Poisson process. All right, so oftentimes in a, in a problem, we might see, okay, this is based on a Poisson process. Don't just automatically say, oh, I see that word Poisson, so this must be a Poisson problem. Remember, an exponential is based on a Poisson process as well, all right, where we have this rate of occurrence that we're assuming. The Poisson PDF is pretty easy to work with. It's just the lambda times e to the negative lambda x. And the CDF is really nice. We have a nice closed form CDF for the exponential. All right. So the, the PDF is not too hard to integrate, right? We know um, like la lambda is just a constant. And then integrating anything involving e is usually pretty easy to integrate, e to the x anyways. Um, but our, our CDF is super easy to plug into as well. So this is why we like the exponential. Um, it, it's, it's PDF and CDF are pretty easy to work with. Okay, as far as its expected value and variance, the expected value is just one over lambda. All right, and this, this makes sense. We'll, we'll see this in uh, an example in a minute. And our variance, one over lambda squared. So if we wanted the square root of that, it's just one over lambda. All right, so the graph of an exponential, now we know what to expect, um, what the graph of an exponential looks like, but notice in the PDF you do have this negative up here, so it's gonna be, um, our, our y-intercept is actually at lambda, okay, and it's gonna have this kind of downwards pattern here, gonna look right skewed. And notice how, how lambda, our choice of lambda, affects the situation. Right? For larger lambdas, it's going to be much, much steeper. For smaller lambdas, not as steep. All right, so that's what the graph looks like. And again, when, when you're, the graph is important to us because 
when we're doing some sort of um, continuous random variable problem, usually the first thing we want to do is graph and kind of shade the area that we're looking for. But remember, our graph doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so those are the basics of the exponential distribution. Now we'll get into some examples in the next video. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.